Hello, and good afternoon. My name is Didier Van Zek, and I'm software engineer and leading the CNH team. And today I'm going to introduce you to uh, the new internal design of CNH. So, uh, CNH started two years ago, actually, with an ambitious goal to build an open source IoT framework. And it's ambitious not only because there's a lot to do, but mainly because we have to find where to place the cursor between um, ready to use features and development tools. And if we look to, uh, to what has been done during these two years, we can see this tension. On one side, uh, for instance, we have um, software management with an API that supports new package managers and two daemons, the agents on the mapper that separate cleanly the feature from the cloud specific, uh, specificities. But on the other side, we have the configuration plugin for community, great for community users, but helpless for others, and even not so handy if you, your case is slightly different. So we introduce this diversity on purpose, uh, to discover what is the more appropriate for you, uh, our users, and their use cases. But now we have to uh, find a path between the two. And uh, so, just a small detour first. Um, your feedback are, is really important to us. We propose different approaches, uh, some of the similar issues. And please tell us what is great for you and what is less appropriate. Indeed, your feedback matters to shape the future of teenage, and we still have a lot to do. We need to, to improve the container story. As a, we need to uh, have a better uh, child device support, mainly uh, regarding uh, child device registration, authentication, certificates. Uh, yes, we need also, uh, to be honest, we need also to have a lighter teenage uh, uh, today. Uh, Adding, adding many features, we ended with something that is bigger than expected. We also need to stabilize the API, and to, so, so this API can be used by external contributors. So after two years of discovery, we need to consolidate Synage. Today, I will only focus on the internal uh, design. Indeed, to be in position to improve the external API, to improve how the internal code is organized. And this is what we did uh, during the first year, uh, this, uh, this year, this first uh, quarter. Uh, sorry. Um, the point of this refactoring has not to, has not been to clean up a buggy code base. This, uh, this is not the case. And this is the good part of using Rust. We never experience memory bugs, crashes, or low-level concurrency issues. The point of this refactoring is to move fast, to be more flexible, to be able to change our mind. This has been the main counterpart of using Rust. This is definitely not the best tool for prototyping. For instance, we implemented the configuration plugin as an abundant daemon to have early feedback from, from users. And now it should be easy to move that feature inside the community mapper and to support all the device management features in one place. Unfortunately, this has not been the case for and for stupid low level reasons, memory management, resource ownership, incompatible concurrency patterns. To move forward, we need a consistent approach to manage concurrent units of computation. And this approach is the actor model. So called uh, concurrent units of computation that interact uniquely using messages, asynchronous messages. And there is a nice fit between Synage, AIM, and the actor model. Indeed, if you look Synage at a high level, Synage is about connecting subsystem, the device, the cloud, the child devices using JSON, CSV, over MQTT, HTTP. This must be transparent reading the code. However, this has not been the case, uh, this was not the case six months ago. 
where everything was mixed between uh, business logic and low level uh, concerns. Using Actor, we are moving where, so on a, a design where um, these this coordination aspects are more transparent. But before diving into the details, I want to highlight something. The novelty is not that we are using actors. In fact, we are using them since the beginning. If you look at the, at the community mapper, the, on the converter thread, this is an actor. We, since the beginning, we started to use messages, in-memory messages, to uh, interact between uh, different units of computation. Unfortunately, this was not systematic. So the novelty is to have a systematic manner to uh, define actors, to test them, to connect them, and to run them in a, a main process. And to use the same mechanism for MQTT, HTTP, eNotify, timers, uh, and to remove all the words when introduced, unfortunately, uh, to uh, not be able to uh, deal with HTTP. So, uh, to look closely to these properties of the actor model, the first point is self contained messages. The, the point is to, to uh, by contrast, is the, with um, calling a method. Instead of calling a method on some handle, when an, an actor wants to um, have some effect, this effect will be conveyed using a message that that contain everything to, yeah, the, that contains the intent. For instance, if the intent is to send a message of MQTT, we will have a message which type and content defines that this is for MQTT and this is uh, a message to be sent over uh, this uh, topic and uh, using that payload and such and such of uh, MQTT flags. But what is actually done by this uh, message will only be defined by the, uh, the recipient. If we, uh, to, to send this actually over MQTT, we need to send this message to some actor that behind the scene manage some TCP connection, MQTT connection uh, to the broker and translate this in-memory representation of something to, to, to be done, in that case, to send an MQTT message into an action, an effect. Having self-contained messages improve many things. You can understand uh, the actor in isolation. You can test it using fake messages just by looking at the messages that is going in and out uh, the actor. You don't need the true uh, concrete uh, actual uh, MQTT connection to test uh, something. The second point are the explicit states. If you want to implement a workflow between a subsystem, uh, we can code into a, a sequence of interactions using simply um, the async await framework from Rust, something similar to, to what we you, you will find in, uh, say, JavaScript. And this, you, so you have something that is kind of sequential. I first to do this, I first say to send a message to a child device, then to await the response, then to send another message to another uh, component, again to read the response and send back a complete response to, to the cloud. So we could use that, and to, but in that case, we let the compiler manage all the intermediate states. And the demand state is simply I have already sent a message uh, to some child device, and now I'm waiting uh, the response. By contrast, with actors, the state is defined by the program. If an actor has to wait, wait for something, the state of the actor will simply uh, list all the six where I, I already sent this message, I received these two responses, as there is a timeout that is running, and everything is in memory, and uh, it is um, <clears throat> help to understand what is going on. We have a big picture of the actor and all the interactions. Obviously, this is a bit cumbersome because we have to manage explicitly that state while it was done implicitly by the 
um, Rust uh, compiler before. Next point, uh, unconstrained event loop. Uh, this is a point we discuss a lot in the team because at the very beginning we try to have something that yeah, to, uh, I receive a message and I have to send a response or a stream of response for uh, every input. But in practice, we want to be free to have a lot of uh, patterns. Uh, some uh, actors uh, need to be able to send messages even without even uh, inputs, so to be a source of uh, messages. Or we can, uh, some other actors, for instance, the HTTP actor, need to be able to send uh, different requests uh, in parallel, concurrently, and to send the response when, they, uh, when received from HTTP. So we need to have a different patterns and to be free. And at the end, we just have one method just to just, uh, yes, uh, the actor. Now it's your time. You have to, uh, uh, to run, process your messages, and do what you need to do. And most of our work has been uh, set on the interconnections. We need to be very flexible to be able to um, yeah, truly combine actors. Uh, I have an actor that is working in isolation. I can work a test this actor, but then I, I need to be able to connect this actor to others and to read an application from that. I, I will show you this in a demo. And everything is done using um, leveraging uh, REST. So we have a static compile time checks. An actor cannot send a message to another if the types of these two messages are not compatible. Uh, com compatible. And we also uh, introduced a, a runtime. This runtime is not mandatory. You can test uh, an actor in isolation or even use uh, it uh, without any um, specific um, actor runtime. But if you want, and this is what we will uh, do in practice, you can leverage a runtime that will have a broad view of all the act running actors in an application. For instance, the key uh, feature now for the, uh, using that is um, the ability to shut down everything uh, uh, when you hit the control C key, just to be able to send a message to all the actors, or please stop working cleanly and uh, for a graceful shutdown. So I will show you some um, code uh, using a, a very simple uh, basic actor um, that can gather status from all subcomponents of a device. So the starting point is the global status request. We can suppose that this request will come from the cloud. So the cloud requests uh, the device to uh, provide the status for all the subsystems, all the child devices. And the response will be a map for every subsystem, a status. That the subsystem can be down, have some unknown status, uh, say uh, after a timeout, or be up for uh, since some uh, uptime. So this is this will be the protocol between the device and uh, the cloud. And then is. Uh, uh, the actor will have to send the request to the, server, to the child devices. And we will have again a status request to all on every child device. And uh, at that I'm giving, oh, please, uh, can I have the status of this uh, subsystem? And uh, this subsystem will have to respond uh, with its own status uh, of the same type I've expected here. When I said that these um, messages are self-contained, it just means that this status request, for instance, can be understood even if I'm not this uh, subtype. I, I, I just can observe the messages that are going inside the system. I can notice that this actor is sending a status request to that other shared devices. I don't need to be aware on some private channel between the, um, the main device and the child device. 
All these messages can be understood by any that uh, uh, have access to them. And you have all the information you need to understand, for instance, that the status response is for that system and giving you this status. For the actor itself, um, so the main um, uh, feature of the actor will be this run method, uh, given some state, uh, with the full content of the actor, but not only the state of the actor, but also uh, all the mechanism to send and receive messages from others. And the event loop will be, in that case, very simple, because I just have to receive uh, messages until I have some message, I will have to process this message depending on the type of message I have. So uh, in that case, I will have uh, either uh, status uh, coming uh, request status coming from the cloud or a status response coming from the child devices. The fact that I receive two kinds of uh, messages is defined here. I have a, a type here that I name status input and where I, I can see, uh, list all the um, uh, options. This guy can receive status, global status request or uh, uh, local status responses. And vice versa, uh, this actor will send a global status response, corresponding to this request, and will send request, status request, to the child devices. And all these messages will simply be put in a in a message box. Uh, this message box is the uh, simplest that we can have. Uh, there is just uh, a queue of messages waiting for uh, being processed and an output uh, that can be uh, used by others. But at this level, I just have message in, message out. I have some uh, configuration. Yeah, I, uh, I, I took a very simple path where the configuration, the list of child devices is simply given um, when the system is built. Obviously, we need something more um, involved uh, in a real system, but not, that's not the point. What is interesting is this, this part. Um, this actor um, manages state. When there is a request, this actor will manage the state of all the response uh, being collected, what is going on, what is still pending, and so on. So uh, we will have a, a set of uh, subsystem for which I'm expecting a response, and the response all collected. So this is a state at a given point in time of my actor. So I have a, a nice view of what can be um, all the different steps of this system. And if you look to the, um, now to the code itself, you will see it's quite straightforward, straightforward to understand. Obviously, this example is simple, but um, in practice, we, we use that uh, pattern for uh, now for configuration management, firmware management, and this um, scale very, very uh, uh, nicely. So, uh, for instance, here we can. Uh, just uh, looking the workflow, receive a global response uh, uh, request. Sorry. So if I'm not already uh, trying to um, uh, probe the status of this then I will start a new request. And starting a request is simply uh, sending a status request to all the subsystem I am aware of, and to um, uh, prepare a new state. And this uh, collection, response collection, in that case, we can have a look to this method new. Uh, this is simply uh, an empty uh, set uh, map of uh, responses because it's uh, just started, and the whole set of uh, subsystem. And sending, um, so we send. Uh, and sending a sub, a sub request is just uh, sending a message. Uh, whereas, yeah, sending send status request, this is sending a, uh, a status request to a given name. You can notice there is a, um, a type that is a bit complex here. 
And because I am standing a status request, but this guy is able to send different kind of request, status request, but also global status responses. So I have to tell uh, to the message box, oh, this is uh, this one is a status request and not a global response. Uh, we will see um, some way to improve that later. And now I've sent my uh, uh, request. This item will just continue his event loop and uh, receive, uh, uh, hopefully, a, a status response coming from the different actors. And uh, uh, managing a status response is, again, something I just have um, to uh, uh, update my state. I have a new response, so I pull this response to my set of uh, responses. And I have to probe, uh, is uh, something else, uh, still pending? If not, oh, it's done. So I have to take the response and to send that response uh, to the cloud. So now if I want to test this actor, the key point will be to um, uh, this, uh, this function that will spawn an actor. So uh, mostly, I will have to create my actor with uh, this uh, his state and this message box and to spawn a uh, sub process behind the scene where the actor run. So the job is done here. And the key point is I need to uh, interact with this actor. I need to be able to send message in and to uh, observe what is sent by this uh, actor. So I will build another, I will build two message box, one given to the actor and another one that is used for testing purpose. And these two message box are connected in such a way that when I send a message from this message box, this message will be received by the actor and vice versa. If the actor send a message, a message I, the test message box will receive this message. So uh, pre uh, to prepare a test, I just have to spawn my actor and to return a message box that is connected to the actor. And then I can play with the actor, so I, I spawn my actor. I can simulate a request coming from the cloud. I can check, this is a check, I can check that uh, this actor has, has sent a request per subservice. So in that case, uh, I will, for all the subsystems, I will check that indeed I receive a status request with the uh, appropriate name. The order doesn't matter, so I have some tools to, uh, to ease the testing. And now I have to uh, simulate the child devices. So in that case, using the uh, message box, I can send uh, messages. So this guy says up, this guy says down, um, this one uh, uh, say, oh, I don't know which case I, I, I am. And I can continue my test just uh, in that case to um, uh, assess, assess that uh, the actor behind the scenes sends something that I can receive on this test message box. And this uh, message is the response to the cloud. And I, have to, uh, I can double check that the response is but, uh, it's just a negotiation of all the third responses. I will just um, move to uh, some intermediate state where I, I will improve the way we manage the, um, uh, the messages. Uh, pre uh, so I change nothing on the messages itself, but uh, I, instead of using a simple message box, now I use something a bit more involved where I introduce a distinction between a receiver for the inputs and, and now I use two senders. I'm able to send messages on two different uh, box. And so I have, um, this is done for many purposes. Just for um, a cosmetic change, since I have a specific message box to send uh, messages to the um, cloud or to some uh, peers, the same messages uh, functions will be uh, simpler. I don't have to create but, uh, an envelope around my uh, messages, I can send directly them because this um, channel is ready to receive this kind of messages. 
but this is kind of cosmetic, uh, more cosmetic than uh, other thing. Another, uh, what will be very important uh, for um, actual actor will be to uh, to choose when uh, having a specific um, way to, uh, channel to receive, a specific way to, uh, channel to send will be uh, very important if you want to coordinate, to say, oh, I will expect on this uh, at that time only messages from these guys and not that one to 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 to, to share repeat what you are doing. Um, for testing purpose, it's changed uh, a bit, but because now I will have to interact with two message box: one that simulates the cloud, another one that simulates the local. Um, uh, actor, and again, I will have to. Um, Establish connections. You can notice uh, something a, a, a slight different between the two. Um, this is simply because uh, this actor is using behind the scene uh, the local message box. So I will have to provide this message box directly when I build the actor. While the actor publish uh, some API the so ability to have uh, global uh, connections, and this is uh, the cloud will use that. Well, in practice, the mapper for the cloud uh, will use these connections. So there is some asymmetry here, but this is a detail. And now we have two message box, one for the cloud, one for local interaction, and the states are the same, just uh, a bit clearer. Uh, this is message sent by the cloud. Uh, this is message is received by local by the child devices. Again, something sent by child devices, and something received by the cloud. And now I would like to move to an, uh, another step, adding um, timeouts. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Was a bit of it. Um, so I'm adding the ability to uh, I send a request to a child device, but this guy is down, or at least uh, there is a huge latency. So I would just say to the cloud, oh, I, I don't know what's the state of this um, uh, actor. To implement this, so we need to, to use another actor. So. Uh, uh, we will have to connect a, to an, a timer actor that will uh, receive a set timeout for a given uh, information. I'm free as a, a user to uh, pick uh, the event type I put here. So in that case, I will use system name. Uh, please, I, I would like to set a timeout for this guy. And I will receive responses. Uh, oh, uh, time elapsed for this guy. And so I. I in the actor itself, I would change the status. I will have a new type uh, that is a status timeout. And I will add a new channel uh, for the to receive the response. So I will have um, one input channel where I receive, I gather a different kind of events, and I will have three independent outputs uh, to send the responses, to send sub requests, and also to set timers. Before, uh, uh, just where I where so, so when I send a status request to a child device, I will have also to send a timer request to so to a different actor. Uh, please, uh, can you awake me uh, in five seconds just to double check this this guy has received or not uh, send it or not is a response. And I will have to handle a new kind of messages. Uh, in that case, uh, just to uh, I have nothing specific to to say. I would just mimic if I have, uh, so I have a timeout. It just means that uh, the status of uh, this guy is unknown, and the um, the fact that I know that this is this system, this child device, and not another is simply because the status timeout um, is an envelope to something uh, to some event. Uh, pass to when I send this device. So when I send this timer status, I say, oh, this is for this subsystem. And five minutes after, I will receive this message with the same um, uh, status uh, system uh, subsystem name. 
and here mimic a, a status response. And the test will be the same, similar again, this time I will have three boxes, and I will be able to uh, mimic, uh, so uh, a timeout. So instead of, uh, uh, I will receive two uh, peers uh, telling us their own state, this guy will uh, never respond, and they will have a time, timeout. Just very simple. Uh, now, it's no more an example. This is uh, a device management uh, uh, process. We are preparing to have a, a, a huge process to have all the community related uh, features regarding device management. So, configuration, uh, firmware, uh, logging, and, and this is the code for this uh, actor. So, we can see that the, the code of um, a new uh, a process will be just a main, and that main will be uh, so to use some configuration to build some actors to connect them. So, for instance, this configuration actor need to run uh, need to some MQTT connection, some HTTP connection, a timer, um, an actor that will uh, use eNotify to uh, watch the file system and so on. To connect all these actors and to run them and run to completion. So, having to add or remove an actor from a, ma a main will be just a matter to uh, remove or add the uh, proper lines here. So, um, So during, uh, we have no, you know, I, I think everything is, we just had to to, to finalize uh, the uh, some points in the map and the, in the agents to have refactor everything using actors. And um, this in, not only will improve um, the way we have more modular uh, components Focus just on one thing. For instance, the configuration management uh, has no knowledge of MQTT beyond send, uh, this message, this envelope somehow, and uh, no uh, true condition to MQTT, no condition to HTTP, nothing, just something that is focused on configuration management. And sometimes more flexibility to be able to uh, uh, have more, uh, yeah, to combine different actors into a single main and also to improve testability and observability because we will be able to observe all these messages running uh, flowing uh, in the system. So yes, we are now prepared to the next challenges and uh, this will be to uh, improve the external API and the uh, experience of Synage. Up to you, Phil. Uh, so. Excellent. Thank, thanks, Didier. Thanks. It's uh, really interesting to see how how things are evolving. So I think every, everything in the work has been quite accelerated, isn't it? So moving forwards, helping organisations uh, with, with what they want to do. So it's very, very interesting stuff. So has anybody got any questions or uh, queries to Didier? Because I know we've gone through quite a lot. And maybe one question from myself, Didier. So you, you indicated that now sort of um, we, we've done one part of the, the refactoring. Um, can you add a bit more detail about what the next phase is? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, there, there are many things. Um, I think we need to refactor the, the organization, the packaging of Synage. Today we have too many um, daemons. And this is uh, this makes the packaging uh, a bit more complicated and more complex. And this is also more difficult for uh, you uh, to deploy everything to have everything working. So we plan to to move for, uh, to another organization where we have uh, say uh, device management uh, daemon that is doing everything uh, in one piece of code, some battery included uh, component. This is one direction, and uh, we also uh, need to work on the um, 
this is why uh, this question about MQTT or HTTP to improve extension point. For instance, I said a word about uh, the configuration plugin. Uh, today we have something that is running, it's nice, but you have no way to uh, uh, to, to, to implement your own configuration management, say for um, Azure or for you. If you want to tweak something, we need to have an API here. Yeah. So we need to, to, to improve the API over MQTT, HTTP, and uh, yeah, to, and to have something that is defined for all and every uh, features. Yep. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And oh, maybe, maybe one more addition. So I think one of the kind of features that will benefit greatly from the actor model is the implementation of the device profile feature. Because in a sense, the device profile is a combination of software configuration and firmware management. And so that the kind of composability that the actor model brings us means that we can better reuse the existing code to implement the device profiles. So that's why uh, from the kind of feature development part, we've been postponing the device profiles because of the actor model, because we really want to get that um, in. Uh, so to make the implementation a lot easier for us, um, but that's only the first feature that will be easier for development side. Um, I believe that this actor refactoring will have a massive increase on our productivity. Um, so I think you'll be able to deliver more quicker and also better, better tested um, because the testability aspect and the observability aspect is very, very nice. N not only from like a developer point of view, but also if in the future we have people contributing the projects, it's a little bit easier to see what's going on and it reduces a little bit of the complexity. So I, th I think moving forward, you'll see a lot of benefits uh, uh, come from the actor model.